This is going to be verse by verse of Romans chapter 11. And in Romans chapter 11, it's one of the greatest chapters to show that the Lord Jesus Christ isn't done with Israel and that the church hasn't replaced Israel as many people are teaching today. But in Romans chapter 11 and verse 1, it says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So this is Paul's talking, and he says, I also am an Israelite. And then he says, has God cast away his people? And his people is obviously a reference to Israel. Because Paul goes on to say, For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. But God isn't done with Israel. Although the Jews rejected Jesus Christ, uh, they, they rejected their Messiah. They don't believe that he is Lord and Savior today. And they're doing a lot of wicked things. And the Bible says in Acts 13, 46, it says, Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. And Paul said in Acts 18, 6, After the Jews rejected Jesus again, he said, From henceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. So, after they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, God stopped dealing with the Jews. There's still Jews getting saved, of course, but as a whole, for the most part, He's not dealing with the Jews. And we're in what's called the church age. And then when the church leaves, He's going to go back to dealing with the Jews again. But the Jews are blinded temporarily for this reason. And for this time we are living in today, the Lord is dealing primarily with Gentiles. And when a Jew or Gentile believes the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection, they are put into the body of Christ. And spiritually speaking, once someone is put into the body of Christ, they are neither Jew nor Greek. So some believe that the church, which is the body of Christ, has replaced Israel. But that's obviously not true. And notice that Paul identifies as being a Jew physically, even after he's saved. And once the body of Christ leaves, like I said, the Lord will once again be dealing with the Jews. Now Romans 11, 2, it says, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and have digged down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. So notice that Elijah made intercession against Israel, and not for them. Because they killed the prophets, and digged down thine altars. So God's people were contrary to him. They killed his prophets. They digged down his altars, and sought the life of Elijah. And today in the church age, the church is in apostasy, following in the same steps of Israel. And people in the church don't want to hear sound doctrine from preachers. They have heaped to themselves teachers having itching ears. Uh, they don't like sound Bible preachers. Now Romans 11:4. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Elijah said, I am left alone in Romans 11.3. But is he left alone? In Romans 11.4 it says that the Lord has reserved to himself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. He thought he was alone. And God's answer to him was, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men. So maybe you are living in an area that doesn't have many Christians who are Bible believers and many times you think to yourself, um, where are all the Bible believers? I'm just all alone here. There nobody else believes like this and I just have to be a lone ranger here. But the Lord has Bible believers scattered around. You just got to look for them. There's scattered Bible believers in every state. Probably even in your town you just don't know them. 
and one could pray that the Lord would send them someone to fellowship with. In Romans 11:5, it says, Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. So there are still Jews getting saved today by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. As it says, even at this present time. So just because God is done with the Jews doesn't mean, or just because he's temporarily done with the Jews doesn't mean that none of them are getting saved. And there is also going to be Jews who will believe in the time of Jacob's trouble and they'll go into the kingdom with Jesus Christ. The Antichrist is going to sit in the holy place. This is called the abomination of desolation. Claim, And he's going to claim to be God. This is going to happen in the middle of the tribulation. And the Jews are going to then know he is a fake and will then turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 11, 6, And if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. So if it is by grace, then it is no more of works. And if a Jew chooses to believe the gospel and be saved, then he can be saved by grace through faith. If he chooses to stay under the law and rely on his works, then he'll go to hell. And that is true for both the Jew and Gentile alike because the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was the perfect sacrifice. And all we need to do is believe on Him and Him alone, not on any works. Now Romans eleven seven it says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So what's this saying? In, three, in, in verse 7, there are three groups. You see, Israel as a nation hath not obtained to that which he seeketh for. The election in the verse are the Jews chosen by God. They hath obtained it. And then you have the unbelieving Jews who are blinded. So you have Israel as a nation that hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. And then you have the election... Jews chosen by God and then you have the rest that are blinded the Israel that hath not obtained it as it says in Romans 11 7 couldn't obtain it because they were seeking righteousness by the works of the law they were ignorant of God's righteousness and went about to establish their own righteousness and then the election in verse 7 hath obtained it because they received Jesus Christ of their own free will and therefore had his righteousness imputed unto them. And then the rest that were blinded in verse 7 are those that rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and have therefore sent something similar to a strong delusion. As, they'll be, as it talks about in 2 Thessalonians 2, God's got a little bit of a strong delusion on them. They've been blinded. You know, once you just continuously reject truth, the Lord will help blind you a little bit. Isaiah 29 10 says for the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and hath closed your eyes the prophets and your rulers the seers hath he covered see how the Lord has put upon them a spirit of deep sleep and closed their eyes and the prophets and the rulers and the seers hath he covered he'll take your preachers and don't show them anything else in the Bible and that's what he's doing with a lot of churches that are blinded to the truth they're blinded to the truth about sin they're blinded to the truth about you know bible doctrine because they they'd rather have a teacher who just gives them what they want a positive message and the preacher's changing the bible he's up there correcting the book and god just shuts the door on giving him any more light but since the jews rejected jesus christ and all his miracles he did before them and all the apostles' signs and miracles performed before their very eyes, the Lord has sent a deep sleep and a covering of the eyes on the Jews for the most part. And that verse in Isaiah said, The prophets and the seers hath he covered. And that's an amazing verse. Israel isn't going to have a true prophet of God sent to them again until the time of Jacob's trouble. And they may have some men with a burden for them now, when, when it comes to a, a true prophet being sent to them as it was in the Old Testament and with the apostles, 
they don't see it until Moses and Elijah come back as the two witnesses and the 144,000 in the time of Jacob's trouble. But now Romans 11.8 According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So those blinded Jews have been given the spirit of slumber. They are asleep spiritually. They have the wool pulled over their eyes and they can't hear. As the church does today, Christians are asleep. And that's what Paul says to us in Ephesians 5.14. He says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And many people believe we are in the Laodicean church period. And the Lord said, Anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. People are blinded to the truth. Uh, Romans 3.18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. The church needs to have their ears open to the word of God, and their eyes open, and real Bible preachers, they need to have, instead of these people who are just correcting God's word, but the church is in apostasy. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You need to hear the word of God. A person who gets saved needs to hear the gospel. And after you get saved, you still need to hear the gospel and the word. And since the Jews stayed in rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ, he furthered their blindness. And the more a person rejects light, the more blind they'll get. Now Romans 11, 9, it says, And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. So Jesus Christ, who came to them to save them, ends up being their stumbling block. While he could be your savior and your best friend, he becomes your stumbling block if you reject him. Now Romans 11:10 says, Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. So, and we can find where David said this quote in Psalm 69. In Psalm 69, 22 and 23, it says, Let their table be made, let their table become a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. When a person continues to reject the light that God has given them, they deserve for their table to be made a snare. A table is a place where people fellowship. And Israel had fellowship with devils. They wanted to drink the cup of devils. And 1 Corinthians 10.21 says, You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the devils and of the table of devils. And David said, Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see. The Lord has used the devil to blind the minds of them which believe not. As it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, In whom the God of this world, that's the devil, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Israel has had false gods, and they claim they seek the true God, yet they reject Jesus Christ. Romans 11, 11, I say then, Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather that through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So salvation has come to the Gentiles through the Lord Jesus Christ to make the Jews jealous. In Romans eleven twelve, Now if the fall, fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. You see, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. That doesn't mean he doesn't witness to Jews, obviously. But primarily, he went to the Gentiles, while Peter was primarily to Jews. That doesn't mean he didn't witness to Gentiles. Now, verse 14, if, if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. So Paul 
is provoking the emulation, the Jews, through the Gentiles. He's provoking them to emulation. He's making them jealous because he wants to save some of them. The Jews hate the Gentiles. Now verse 15, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? If the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Wilt thou say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in? Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. Natural branches, he could also spare not thee, as the verses say. Uh, Romans eleven nineteen through 20 says, Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. So Gentiles shouldn't be high-minded. They shouldn't be wise in their own conceits and think that they, the church replaced Israel. Romans 11, 21, For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. If the Lord didn't spare his chosen nation of people, what makes you think he will spare Gentile nations after the body of Christ leaves? So you see, these verses aren't about individual salvation. They're about groups of people. And after the body of Christ leaves, which is all saved people, after we leave, the Gentiles will be broken off, just like the Jews were. The Gentiles, generally speaking, will be blind in the tribulation, just like the Jews are blind today. Romans 11.22 says, Behold, therefore, the goodness of and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also should be cut off. So you see, God has two sides. He has a side that is severe. That's a side of wrath, but he also has a side of goodness. You choose which side you want. You need to realize that in your Christian walk, the things you do affect how God's going to be dealing with you in the flesh. If you're living close to Him in fellowship, then, you know, He's going to have mercy on you. If you're living like the devil, then you're going to get chastened, as it talks about in Hebrews. And notice Paul says, If thou continue in His goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. Just remember, this isn't about individual salvation. It's not saying you can lose your salvation. It's about groups of people. And as long as Gentiles keep reading the Bible and accepting Jesus Christ, then he's going to keep dealing with them. But you know, when the body of Christ leaves, he's going to go back dealing with Israel. And right now you already see that the church itself is in a falling away. It's in apostasy. Romans 11, 23 through 24 says, And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Notice that God is able to graft believing Israel in again. Because if we were cut out of a wild olive tree and grafted into a good olive tree, then the natural branches, which is unbelieving Israel, could believe and easily be grafted back in. Just because God put away Israel doesn't mean they can't be restored. Now Romans 11.25 says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Let blindness and part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So what do we get out of this verse? Someone who thinks that Israel can't get back right with God and be restored, this verse says that person is ignorant and conceited. We also see that blindness in part has happened to Israel, in part because some are still being said today. However, as a nation, they are blinded. 
and they will be blind until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in at the end of the tribulation. Romans 11:26 says, And so all Israel shall be saved. That is, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. If the church replaced Israel, then according to this verse, we haven't yet been saved. Notice it says, All Israel shall be saved. But we're already saved. We presently possess salvation. And when the surviving Jews see the Lord Jesus Christ coming back in his glorified body at the second advent, they will believe on him. As it says, and so all Israel shall be saved. And if you look at Zechariah 12, 10 through 14, it says, And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem, as the mourning of Hadid Rimen in the valley of Megiddo, and the land shall mourn, every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Nathan apart, and their wives apart, the family of the house of Levi apart, and their wives apart, the family of Shimei apart, and their wives apart, and all the families that remain every family apart and their wives apart. So all that remain of Israel will believe on Jesus Christ. And Romans 11:27 says, For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. At that time God will establish His new covenant with His people. Notice it says, When I shall take away their sins. God has already given the new covenant to the church. We can get in when we believe the gospel, but Israel as a nation hasn't yet got in on this new covenant. The church, if the church is Israel, then according to this verse, we wouldn't have our sins taken away because it says, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. I've already got my sins taken away. I'm not Israel. Hebrews 8, 8 through 12 says, For finding fault with him, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not of my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So that's that new covenant. And Romans eleven twenty eight says, And concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. So if the church replaced Israel, then that's calling us enemies to the gospel. The church isn't an enemy to the gospel, but the Jews are. The Jews are beloved enemies. They are enemies to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they, um, they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. So they aren't beloved because of any great thing they're doing. They're beloved for the Father's sake. The Father's being Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Romans 11.29 says, For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. This means that what God promised to Israel, He's going to go through with it. Romans 11.30-31 says, For as, in ye, as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. So through our mercy, they also may obtain mercy. Salvation is offered to Jews and Gentiles alike. The whole world needs mercy because for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now Romans 11, 32 and 33 says, For God who hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And no one would have thought of such a great plan to establish a covenant other than God himself. That's why it says, Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. 
Romans 11, 34 says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? And the answer to that question is nobody. Even the smart people who think they know everything can't be his counselor. His ways are past finding out. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Another question in Romans eleven thirty five: Or who hath first given to him, and then it shall be recompensed unto him again? The question is, who has given something to God that was more than he had given to them already, making him in debt to them? The answer, again, is nobody, because if, if all God did for you was give you Jesus Christ, then that's enough. Then you can't ever repay him. You can't ever give him something greater. Romans 11:36. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. So all things belong to God. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 says, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. When it's all wound up, it will be God who gets glory and no one else. So Paul says, To whom be glory forever. Amen. <laughs>